Some think, excuse me if I use the word, that in order to be good Catholics we have to be like rabbits. But no, he said, adding the church promoted responsible parenthood. Assemble the Hello, fellow Catholics out there in Internet land, and welcome to Cafeteria Catholics, where Catholicism makes sense. Drop us a line, cafeteriacatholicsyahoo.com. Let us know whether you like the show, whether you hate the show, whether you love the show. And I am your humble host, Ephraim Cortez. And as always, we are coming to you from the great city of Lexington, Kentucky via Spreaker and iHeart Radio and what's going on? Silly rabbit, kids are for kids. <laughs> what's going on, silly rabbits? No, <laughs> what's going on, fellow Catholics? Great to be behind the Cafeteria Catholics microphone. On a Tuesday, fellow Catholics, I'm usually here on the weekend when I am well rested and refreshed, fellow Catholics, Saturday, Sunday. But this past Saturday, fellow Catholics, my wife, she celebrated her birthday. And so that kept us apart, fellow Catholics. And I'm not going to tell you how old she is. Okay, I'm not going to fall into that trap, fellow Catholics. I'm not going there because I know how women are. They're touchy about their age. Okay, and so I'm not going to go there, fellow Catholics. But that kept us apart on Saturday. And then on Sunday, fellow Catholics, on Sunday I tried to be here. But technical difficulties did not allow for that to happen, fellow Catholics, okay? But it turned out to be a good thing, actually. Because I happened to come across this great, awesome talk by the former bishop of the Diocese of Lexington, Kentucky, on homosexual marriage, fellow Catholics. Bishop Ronald W. Gaynor gave an awesome talk, okay? And so it turned out to be great, actually. And Bishop Ronald W. Gaynor, he is to be commended for his courage, fellow Catholics. Standing firm in the teaching, the doctrine of the Catholic Church on homosexuality in the face of apparent opposition, fellow Catholics. You know, and there shouldn't be any opposition because this talk by Bishop Ronald W. Gaynor was given to Catholic high school students, fellow Catholics, okay? And so there should have been nothing but cohesiveness, fellow Catholics. But if you listen to the talk, it's quite clear that there were those within this high school, Catholic high school, who had an opposing view to that of the teaching of the Catholic Church, fellow Catholics, okay? And so, props to Bishop Ronald W. Gaynor for having the courage to stand there and to not compromise the teaching of the Catholic Church. Bishop Ronald W. Gaynor, he is in line with Catholic doctrine, and he is of the same ilk, cut from the same cloth, as Archbishop Thomas Wensky of the Archdiocese of Miami in Florida, fellow Catholics, who we talked about last time on the show, fellow Catholics. Courageous, okay? In today's day and age, fellow Catholics, it is rare to find a member of the clergy, a bishop, a cardinal, a deacon, a priest, who will not compromise the teaching of the Catholic Church under, uh, under pressure, from the culture, under pressure from the mainstream media, under pressure from the Pope Obama administration, from the courts, fellow Catholics, okay? And so Bishop Ronald W. Gaynor, he is to be commended, he is to be applauded, fellow Catholics, for standing firm in the teaching of the Catholic Church. And he was a great shepherd when he was here in the Diocese of Lexington, Kentucky. And I had my issues with, with Bishop Ronald W. Gaynor, le le legitimate points of contention, I believe, fellow Catholics. You know, for one, we had uh, Bishop Ronald W. Gaynor allowed 
for this scandalous fundraiser evening among friends to take place here in the Diocese of Lexington, Kentucky, fellow Catholics. And so that was one point of contention that I had with the bishop, and I believe that it was a legitimate point of contention, fellow Catholics. I mean, here we had, or here we still have, fellow Catholics, this scandalous fundraiser. It's been taking place for over a decade now, right? And, well, a decade, I should say, right? It started back in 2005, so it, it's been a decade, fellow Catholics, of scandalous fundraising here in the Diocese of Lexington, Kentucky, right? And it largely took place under the pastoral care of Bishop Ronald W. Gaynor, and so I had an issue with this, fellow Catholics, okay? A legitimate issue, I believe, okay? Because... We were rolling out the red carpet, and we are rolling out the red carpet for members of Hollywood that in some way or another oppose the teaching of the Catholic Church, right? And as we've been told by our bishops, right, the Catholic community and Catholic institutions should not honor those who oppose our fundamental moral principles as Catholics. They should not be given awards honors or platforms that would suggest support for their actions fellow Catholics and so our bishops are clear right and yet we had a bishop member of the United States Conference of Catholic Bishops Bishop Ronald W Gaynor who allowed this to take place in the Diocese of Lexington Kentucky allowing a Catholic platform awarding a Catholic platform to those who in some way or another oppose our fundamental moral principles as Catholics. Okay, and so as far as I'm concerned, the scandalous fundraiser, Evening Among Friends, nails our Catholic moral principles to the cross, fellow Catholics, okay? This is how I feel about this scandalous fundraiser, and it took place under the pastoral care of Bishop Ronald W. Gaynor, fellow Catholics. But nevertheless, he is a great bishop. He is an awesome bishop. And by the way, you've never heard a peep from local Catholic radio about the scandalous nature of Evening Among Friends, fellow Catholics. I mean, we've had, we've rolled out the red carpet for Mr. Bill Cosby, fellow Catholics, in spite of the fact that at the time, Mr. Bill Cosby had a civil suit against him for allegedly sexually abusing 13 different women and now you know it's 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 exploded fellow catholics right who's keeping count anymore right 25 26 27 different women have come forth accusing mr bill cosby allegedly of uh, of uh, sexually abusing them raping them in some cases fellow catholics and yet we rolled out the red carpet for Mr. Bill Cosby, in spite of the fact that I warned local Catholic radio about uh, the fact that he had a, an ongoing civil suit against them for sexual abuse, fellow Catholics, okay? And yet, I was ignored, right? And so I had an issue, and I still have an issue with this scandalous fundraiser, but I had an issue with Bishop Ronald W. Gaynor as it pertained to this point scandalous fundraiser evening among friends okay and i also had a point of contention with uh bishop ronald w gainer uh with a policy that was implemented by him and his brother bishop his his brother kentucky bishops here in the diocese of lexington kentucky right they implemented a policy that allowed for emergency contraception to be administered in catholic hospitals fellow catholics and Catholic emergency rooms here in the Diocese of Lexington, Kentucky. In Kentucky, fellow Catholics, okay? All four bishops, including Bishop Ronald W. Gaynor, who, by the way, he should be commended, actually, right? Because in the end, he realized that he listened to the wrong people. And he even admitted that he listened to the wrong people. And this is why he made a mistake. He made a mistake. And this is why he uh, was in line, fell in line, with uh, this, this, this wicked policy that allowed for the use of artificial contraception. The emergency 
morning after pill, fellow, uh, fellow Catholics, right? He allowed for this to happen in the Diocese of Lexington, Kentucky. But he realized he made a mistake, and he tried to right a wrong in the end, and he tried to have this policy reversed, fellow Catholics. He even took it to the Vatican, fellow Catholics, okay? And so this is not to mar the reputation of Bishop Ronald W. Gaynor. He made a mistake, made a mistake, but at the time, it was a, a large point of contention, not only for me, but for many within the... Di those who were privy to the fact that this was going on, fellow Catholics, okay? And local Catholic radio, not one word, in spite of the fact that I have it from good sources, reliable sources, that there were those, and there are those within local Catholic radio who disagree with this policy, and yet not one word about it, fellow Catholics, okay? I mean, you want to talk about deflated balls, <laughs> fellow Catholics, <laughs> You want to talk about deflated balls, fellow guy? Forget about the Super Bowl, okay? You need look no further than local Catholic radio if you want to find def <laughs> if you want to find deflated balls, okay? Uh, local Catholic radio—that's the place to look, fellow Catholics. Okay? Now, if you want overinflated balls, <laughs> then you need to log on to, click on to. Cafeteria Catholics, the podcast, Cafeteria Catholics, because we will not sweep the truth under the rug, fellow Catholics. It's not going to happen here, okay? And we've spoken about these issues on more than one occasion, fellow Catholics. The fact that we have uh, 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 emergency contraception being administered in Catholic emergency rooms here in the Diocese of Lexington, as we speak, fellow Catholics, as we speak... There could be chemical abortions taking place in Catholic hospitals in the Diocese of Lexington, Kentucky. In the state of Kentucky, fellow Catholics, okay? And we've spoken out about it, and we are talking about it right now, fellow Catholics. But have you ever heard, if you happen to be from the Diocese of Lexington, Kentucky, have you ever heard any member of local Catholic radio talking about this issue, fellow Catholics, right? Uh, perhaps, if you've not tuned into local Catholic radio, or I should say, if you've not tuned into Cafeteria Catholics before, this is perhaps the first time you are hearing this, fellow Catholics, okay? And we need to pray about this. This is the sole reason for me exposing this and shining a light on it, fellow Catholics. Because the more Catholics we have praying about this, the better fellow Catholics. You see, local Catholic radio, they know this is taking place. They know it's happening. They know that at this moment, there could be a chemical abortion taking place in local Catholic hospitals here in the Diocese of Lexington, Kentucky, and yet not one word, fellow Catholics, right? Not one invitation to prayer, to intercede against this, this wicked policy, fellow Catholics, right? Not one word. But yet, here I am, I am imploring you to please pray about this. Pray against this policy, fellow Catholics, okay? Because as we speak, chemical abortions could be taking place in Catholic hospitals in the Diocese of Lexington, Kentucky, fellow Catholics, okay? Deflated balls, <laughs> fellow Catholics, okay? Look no further than local Catholic radio, okay? But a great talk fellow Catholics, by Bishop Ronald W. Gaynor on homosexual marriage, or mirage, as we like to refer to it here at Cafeteria Catholics. Okay, and I, I'm probably a little off, ca fellow Catholics, and so I apologize because I've been working uh, all day long, fellow Catholics, and yet here I am, okay, and so I may not be up to par, okay, I may not be as crisp as I usually am, okay, fellow Catholics, but uh, a great talk by Bishop Ronald W. Gaynor on same-sex marriage. And he made a lot of the same points that we have made here for quite a while now on Cafeteria Catholics, okay? For quite a while we've been talking about same-sex marriage, and we've uh, made the points, right, that, uh, for one, uh, it's a mirage, fellow Catholics. This is what we call 
homosexual marriage here at the Cafeteria Catholics. It is a mirage because it is an illusion, fellow Catholics. David Blaine could not pull off such an exceptional illusion as homosexual marriage, fellow Catholics. Catholics, because it's just not there. It doesn't exist, fellow Catholics. And you always hear the argument, right? You always hear the argument that, hey, I mean, these people, they love each other, right? But do they really, and this is a point that was brought up in that talk by Bishop Ronald W. Gaynor, do they really love each other, okay? I mean, it, it is not the complete fulfillment of love, homosexual relationships, okay? They are not the complete fulfillment of love, fellow Catholics. They're not. I mean, think about it, okay? I mean, the mission, the mission of a marriage between a man and a woman is to lead each other to heaven. In other words, you want the very best for your spouse. The husband, he should want the very best for his wife. The wife, she should want the very best for her husband. And what could be better than heaven, fellow Catholics? And so this is what we as husbands, as wives, should desire for our spouses, fellow Catholics. And this is the mission of marriage. It is to lead each other to heaven. You want the very best for your spouse fellow Catholics. Homosexual mirage fails to accomplish this, fellow Catholics, okay? Because what is the crux? What is at the center of homosexuality? Sodomy, fellow Catholics. This is what homosexuality is essentially about. It is about sodomy, fellow Catholics. Okay, well, uh, I, as a Catholic, I don't have a problem with homosexuals. I have a problem with sodomy. Sodomy is a mortal sin, fellow Catholics, okay? And we cannot reach heaven living a lifestyle of sin. And so if these people truly loved each other, they would want the very best for each other, fellow Catholics, right? And yet... A lifestyle of sodomy is not the very best that they can give each other, fellow Catholics. It is mortal sin, right? You know, if my wife sees me doing something that is sinful, fellow Catholics, she has no problem, trust me, she has no problem letting me know in front of the neighbors, fellow <laughs> in front of the neighbors, right? She'll let me know. But this is her duty. It is her responsibility to lead me to heaven. And so if she sees me falling into sin, she will let me... She has no problem letting me know, fellow Catholics, okay? And vice versa. I have no problem letting my wife know that she is falling into sin. Because it is my mission, it is my responsibility, my duty as a husband to lead her to heaven right and the path to heaven is not made up of sin right it is made up of grace fellow Catholics okay and in order for my spouse to remain on the path of grace the path to heaven she has to avoid sin and I am going to help her because I love her avoid sin A homosexual relationship, they do not help each other in avoiding sin, right? They are living a lifestyle of sin, fellow Catholics, okay? And so, it is not true love. It is not true love, fellow Catholics. And furthermore, I mean, we've talked about the fact that homosexuals cannot procreate, fellow Catholics. They simply cannot they cannot. And you hear the argument, even from the United States Supreme Court. Some of you m might remember, you know, uh, Supreme Court Justice uh, Kagan, she brought up the argument that, hey, you know, it might be true, right, that homosexuals cannot procreate, 
But this is true of some heterosexuals, right? And it's true. We've got heterosexuals, right, that cannot procreate because of some clinical issue, perhaps, right? Some medical matter. Or perhaps they are up there in age and they can no, no longer bear children, right? And so uh, there are instances where some heterosexual couples cannot procreate. But that's the key word there, fellow Catholics. Some. Some heterosexual couples cannot procreate for whatever the reason might be, right? But the key word in a homosexual mirage and a homosexual relationship is all. All homosexual relationships, all homosexual mirages are incapable of procreating, fellow Catholics, all. And the reason they are all incapable of procreating is because it goes against nature. Men and men are not meant to come together in that way. It's just not part of God's plan, right? It's not part of God's order, right? The order of sex, fellow Catholics, is meant to take place within the marriage bond between a man and a woman, not a man and a man, fellow Catholics. This is the order of sex, fellow Catholics. You know, everything that God has created has an order. We've talked about this. I think we talked about it the last time on the show, fellow Catholics. Everything has an order. God is a God of order. Look at the galaxy. Look at outer space, fellow Catholics. Look at our, our, our galaxy. Okay? The planets, they are lined up just right. The sun happens to be at just the right distance so that we here on Earth may benefit from the heat of the sun rather than fall victim to the heat of the sun. So there's an order, fellow Catholics. The liturgy is ordered. There are four parts to the liturgy, fellow Catholics, right? Everything that is created by God, which is everything, is ordered, fellow Catholics, right? And when you fall out of that order, what do you have? You have chaos. You have anarchy, fellow Catholics, right? You have disease. You have pestilence fellow Catholics, right? Because the order of God in some way has been violated, fellow Catholics. This is why paragraph 2357, I believe, of the Catechism of the Catholic Church says that homosexuality is intrinsically disordered, fellow Catholics, right? And if we want an example of this, all we have to do is look at the homosexual sex abuse scandals, fellow Catholics, within the Catholic Church, or I should say scandal. I mean, we've had more, I mean, if you count each individual diocese, right? I mean, we've had scandals in, in, in individual dioceses, fellow Catholics. And so, I guess we can say homosexual sex abuse scandals throughout the Church, fellow Catholics, right? All you have to do is look at that if you want evidence that homosexuality is indeed Disordered fellow Catholics, right? And, you know, we've got bishops out there, fellow Catholics. We've got Bishop uh, Robert Lynch, in complete contrast to uh, Archbishop Thomas Wensky, Bishop Robert Lynch of the Diocese of Petersburg, uh, St. Petersburg, I'm sorry, St. Petersburg, Florida, fellow Catholics, right? Basically, uh, denouncing the teaching of the Catholic Church on homosexuality, fellow Catholics, right? And uh, they want, or at least Bishop uh, Lynch, he wants, as I said, fellow Catholics, I'm not all there today, fellow Catholics, I've been working all day and here I am behind the cafeteria Catholics microphone, but uh, Bishop Lynch, fellow Catholics, right? Uh, uh, promoting, advancing uh, a pastoral response to homosexuality, fellow Catholics, right? Homosexuality, I mean, we have been, within the Catholic Church, we have been so accepting of homosexuality, so tolerant of homosexuality, of sodomy, fellow Catholics, that we have allowed homosexual priests to infiltrate the priesthood, fellow Catholics, right? It doesn't get more accepting than that fellow Catholics, right? 
doesn't get more accepting than that. And yet here we have Bishop Robert Lynch suggesting that we need to be more open to homosexuality. Really? Do we really need that? Have we not learned our lesson, fellow Catholics? Have we not learned our lesson? Homosexuality and the morality of the Catholic Church, the teaching of the Catholic Church, it just simply does not coincide, fellow Catholics. They do not coincide. We do not need homosexuality within the church. We don't need homosexuality, period, fellow Catholics, okay? It contributes nothing good to a society. It contributes nothing good to the church, especially. We've seen that, fellow Catholics. We should know this firsthand, fellow Catholics. We should know this, should we not, at this point, fellow Catholics? But Bishop Ronald W. Gaynor, a great talk on homosexuality, right? And points out, points out that indeed... There is a, a Trinitarian uh, aspect to marriage, fellow Catholics, right? And he takes a different tact, right? Uh, and, hey, I mean, Bishop Ronald W. Gaynor, he, he has a different tone, right? <laughs> he has a different tone uh, than yours truly, your humble host, Ephraim Cortez, right? But he looks at marriage, and he... Uh, 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 makes the point that there is a Trinitarian aspect to the marriage bond, fellow Catholics. But the way that he sees it is the fact that you have a man comes together with a woman in the marriage bond, and from their love springs forth new life, fellow Catholics. And so you have a, 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 a reflection of the Trinity there, right? Because you have the father, you have the mother, and then from that love springs forth another child, another person, right? Just as you have three persons uh, in one God, within one God, within the Godhead, right? And so there's a Trinitarian aspect to marriage, right? Uh, so a lot of the same points were brought up by Bishop Ronald W. Gaynor that we here at the Cafeteria Catholics throughout uh, the last few years we, we've brought to light here at Cafeteria Catholics. And so a great talk by Bishop Ronald W. Gaynor, and so it worked out great that I was not able to be here on Sunday, fellow Catholics, uh, because Bishop Ronald W. Gaynor gave an awesome talk. Let's go ahead and take a break, fellow Catholics. Let me compose myself, fellow Catholics, and we will be back before you can blink. Please, fellow Catholics, do not touch that mouse. So what is the key to a successful marriage? Well, I have an answer that might surprise you a little bit. Are you ready? Death. That's right, death. See, St. Paul tells us that God had a specific intent for marriage, a kind of formula that shows us how to make it work. And at the center of the formula is death to oneself. Paul says that when a man renounces himself completely and lays down his life for his spouse, and in the same way a woman dies to herself for the sake of her husband, a beautiful thing happens. It is only when a married couple chooses to individually die to their selfishness that love becomes perfect and the commitment is fully lived. That authentic love that was born from sacrifice becomes the bond that holds a marriage together. A love that brings God's grace to children and grandchildren and a love that shines as a light to the world. Have you ever had someone show you incredible, overwhelming kindness? You know, the kind of generosity that makes you feel kind of small and unworthy? Well, when it comes to our relationship with the Eucharist, we should probably feel the same way. Now, we know that the Eucharist is truly the body and blood of Jesus Christ. But how often do we stop to think about the price that was paid for us to be graced with such a gift? In order for Jesus to leave us his body, blood, soul, and divinity in the Eucharist, he first had to offer himself completely. Through his agonizing passion and death, the lamb was slain so the bread of life could be ours. Is our response one of fervent gratitude? Or have we become apathetic and complacent? Jesus longs to nourish us with himself in the Eucharist. Do we long 
to receive this gift? going on, fellow Catholics? We are back. Cafeteria Catholics. And hey, do you want to hear a story that you will not hear on local Catholic radio here in the Diocese of Lexington, Kentucky, and perhaps abroad, fellow Catholics? Well, here's one. Uh, you know, we were talking about deflated balls <laughs> earlier in the show, right? And if you want to find deflated balls, fellow, forget about the Super Bowl, okay? Just look no further than local Catholic radio here in the Diocese of Lexington, Kentucky, fellow Catholics, right? There are certain things that they just will not talk about, right? And LifeSite News, this is a great source of information, fellow Catholics. You will find information on LifeSite News that you simply will not find on mainstream Catholic media, fellow Catholics, right? And we were talking about last time on the show, we were talking about uh, how you need, you have to have two-thirds majority vote in order for a proposition to move forward, right, to the next level of discussion within the Senate, fellow Catholics, right? You have to have two-thirds majority vote. And as you know, the propositions of communion for the divorced and remarried did not get two-thirds majority vote, failed to garner two-thirds majority vote, fellow Catholics, just as this proposition on homosexuality, being more open and accepting of homosexuality, fellow Catholics, this, fellow Catholics, did not get two-thirds majority vote, and yet they are still moving forward with these propositions, fellow Catholics, right? And this simply, it cannot happen without the approval of Pope Francis, fellow Catholics, right? But you will not hear this on Catholic radio. It is inconvenient truth, fellow Catholics. You simply will not hear it on local Catholic radio, and you will not hear it on mainstream Catholic media, fellow Catholics, right? But here's another story here from LifeSite News once again. And you know, the thing about LifeSite News, fellow Catholics, this is a source of information that is often cited by members of local Catholic radio here in the Diocese of Lexington, Kentucky. And yet, this story, fellow Catholics, happens to be one of their main stories. If you go to LifeSite News, okay, they have a Rolodex feature on their front page, right? A, a, I call it a, Rolo, a, a Rolodex uh, feature because, you know, it, it, it automatically uh, shifts from one story to the other. You know, they have three or four main stories, right? And it'll go from one story to the next, one story to the next, right? It's like a Rolodex feature, and so this is what I call it. But here's a story from LifeSite News, right, that you perhaps will not hear on local Catholic radio. It says, Vatican's Senate Chief presses Casper agenda at family meeting. Now, Cardinal Casper, Walter Casper, this is the Cardinal who is pushing for communion for the divorced and remarried fellow Catholics. As you know, right? if you are divorced and remarried, you are essentially, according to the teaching of the Catholic Church, living, or you are, not essentially, you are living in adultery, fellow Catholics. And if you happen to be in mortal sin, which adultery happens to be a mortal sin, fellow Catholics, you cannot receive the body, blood, soul, and divinity of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. You cannot receive the Eucharist, fellow Catholics, right? You cannot receive communion, right? Communion means that you are in unity with the Catholic Church. And if you happen to be living in mortal sin, fellow Catholics, then you are not in union with the Catholic Church. And so, therefore, you cannot receive communion, fellow Catholics. And actually, it doesn't matter whether you receive communion, fellow Catholics, right? Because I know that there's many out there who are living in adultery and yet receiving the body, blood, soul, and divinity of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, right? And if you are doing that, 
it doesn't matter whether you are or not, right? Because you are not in union with the teaching of the Catholic Church. You are not in union with the Catholic Church. Your lifestyle, fellow Catholics, your lifestyle, if you are living in adultery and, or any mortal sin, separates you from the Catholic Church. And so you are not in union, right? And simply because you go and receive communion doesn't mean that you are united to the Catholic Church. You're not, okay? But uh, the heading to this story, Vatican's Senate Chief Presses Casper Agenda at Family Meeting. In coded and carefully couched language, the Vatican's Secretary General of the Senate of Bishops has pressed for the highly contentious proposal to allow divorced and civilly remarried Catholics to receive communion, a move that has been denounced as potentially disastrous for the Church. At a meeting last week of the Pontifical Council for the Family, Cardinal Lorenzo Baldisseri hinted that the work is already being done, done to bring things years uh, uh, to bring this year's upcoming synod into line with Cardinal Walter Casper's proposal. Fellow Catholics, Voice of the Family's Mar M Maria Madice said it was not so much Baldiceri's prepared text that implied the progressivists' proposals are part of a larger agenda, but the question session. During this, she said, Cardinal Baldiceri made a point of chastising those who were concerned about upholding and defending the Catholic teaching on marriage and sexuality and ignored those who would attack it, fellow Catholics. And so this is going on, fellow Catholics, within the church, right before our eyes it is going on. And yet you have members of uh, uh, mainstream Catholic media, members of local Catholic media here in the Diocese of Lexington, Kentucky, who are essentially saying, there's nothing to look at here, fellow Catholics, there's nothing wrong here. You know, it kind of reminds me of when I grew up in the South Bronx, right? It reminds me of growing up in the South Bronx, and, you know, there, there was always something going on. Someone getting shot, someone being robbed, something going on, right? And so, you had people, and me included, right, looking, try, trying to find out what's going on, right? And you always had police officers, you know, and perhaps you had some of that, you know, police line, do not cross tape, right? Uh, uh, keeping you away from the area, right? And you always had a police officer saying, go about your business, there's nothing to look at here, right? In spite of the fact that from your vantage point, you see that there's something going on there, right? And this is exactly what's going on here within the walls of Holy Mother Church. There is something going on. And you have mainstream Catholic media telling you that there's nothing to look at here. Right? There's nothing to look at here. In spite of the fact that these propositions did not get two-thirds majority vote, fellow Catholics. And yet they are moving forward. With, uh, is there nothing wrong with that picture, fellow Catholics? I think there's something to look at there, fellow Catholics. There is something to look at there, right? In spite of what mainstream Catholic media might be saying, fellow Catholics, right? And they love to say, well, you know, Pope Francis says he is a son of the church, right? He is a son of the... What's that mean, right? Adam and Eve, they had... Uh, uh, Cain and Abel, fellow Catholics, they were both sons of Adam and Eve. One was a good son, the other one was not, fellow Catholics. So it doesn't mean anything when you say, well, I'm a son of the church, right? And I'm not comparing Pope Francis to Abel or to, to uh, uh, Cain, fellow Catholics. It's not what I'm doing. All I'm saying is, when you say I am a son of the church, doesn't necessarily mean that you are a loyal son of the church, fellow Catholics, right? I mean, let's be honest. You know, Pope Francis started off his pontificate by uh, casting aside canon law, right, in the liturgy, right? Washing the feet of women. Uh, this is not what is required 
in the liturgy of the washing of the feet, right? It has to be men, right? And canon law is clear that liturgy, there is uh, no one can add or take away from liturgy, fellow Catholics, right? It's canon law, right? Only through the proper channels can this be done, fellow Catholics. And he is the Pope, and he can, you know, uh, uh, disobey canon law if he wishes to, right? But should he, fellow Catholics, right? And he is the Pope. Why not change canon law, right? And then, you know, go through the proper channels as Pope, change it if you don't like it, and then, hey, you know, no argument here, right? But when you are uh, willy-nilly just disregarding canon law, fellow Catholics, even as Pope, what kind of an example is that, fellow Catholics, right? What kind of an example is that, right? But here you have, you know, uh, as far as Cardinal Lorenzo Baldisseri is concerned, communion for the divorced and remarried is happening. It's going to happen, right, as far as he is concerned, right? These are the signals that we are getting from Cardinal Baldisseri, fellow Catholics. And this can't happen without the approval of Pope Francis, right? Can't happen without his approval, fellow Catholics, right? And so, I guess this means that uh, Pope Francis is behind it. He supports it, fellow Catholics. He supports it. But yet, there's nothing to look at here, fellow Catholics. Just keep on walking, right? Just keep on walking. Go about your business, right? And this is precisely what they want you to do. Pay no attention, fellow Catholics, right? Pay no attention. But anyway, I just wanted to bring that up, fellow Catholics. I saw this today. It's one of the reasons why I wanted to come to you today on a Tuesday, fellow Catholics. In spite of the fact that I'm not 100% fellow Catholics, I am I'm tired, to be uh, quite honest. You know, I've been working all day, but here I am, fellow Catholics. Uh, but I just wanted to bring this to your attention, fellow Catholics, because you may not hear it from local Catholic radio here in the Diocese of Lexington, Kentucky, and you may not hear it from mainstream Catholic media. But there it is. Okay? And now you've heard me talk about word manipulation, fellow Catholics, right? Word manipulation. The mainstream media, they love word manipulation. The Pope Bomb administration, they love a good game of word manipulation. It served the Pope Bomb administration well. I mean, just look at homosexual mirage, fellow Catholics. The Pope Bomb administration, they have done great with uh, this tactic of word manipulation, right? Homosexuality, as far as the Pope Bomb administration is concerned, is it is about all things except what it actually is about, which is sodomy, fellow Catholics, right? You know, homosexuality, it's about benefits, it's about tolerance, it's about acceptance, right? It's about love, it's about civil rights, it's about all of these things, right? And so, word manipulation, fellow Catholics, has served the Pope Bomb administration well. It has served the mainstream media well. It has served uh, many factions within the culture well, fellow Catholics, right? Distract from what an issue actually is about, fellow Catholics. Sodomy, right? But who wants to talk about sodomy, right? It is such a judgmental word. You know, it implies sin. Don't you know that in this enlightened culture in which we live, there is no such thing as sin, right? There's no such thing as sin. If it feels good, do it, fellow Catholics, right? This is the mantra of the culture, right? This is the mantra of uh, the Pope Bomb administration, right? If it feels good, do it, right? And so they don't want to hear sodomy, you know? They don't want to hear that. They don't want to hear adultery. They don't want to hear that, right? It's polyamory. 
poly meaning many, and amory meaning love. A lot of love, fellow Catholics. Who wouldn't be for a whole lot of love, fellow Catholics, right? And so it's not adultery. It's polyamory. Word manipulation, fellow Catholics. The owner of the language wins the argument. That's what it's all about, fellow Catholics. Winning the argument, right? That's what it's about. When it comes down to it, the Pope Bomb administration, that's all they care about. Winning the argument, advancing their agenda. The mainstream media, that's all they care about, right? And so this past week, we hear the mainstream media, right, talking about Pope Francis, saying that we, as Catholics, as good Catholics, we do not need to breed like rabbits, fellow Catholics, right? We do not need to breed like rabbits. The rabbit kicked the bucket, the rabbit kicked the bucket, the rabbit kicked the bucket. We just do not need to breed like rabbits, right? Except, fellow Catholics, that Pope Francis, he does mention the word rabbit. He says rabbits, right? He says uh, we do not need to be like rabbits, right? But the word breed, fellow Catholics, that was added on. That was inserted by the mainstream media. And so in all actuality, this is not even a case of word manipulation. It is a case of word insertion, fellow Catholics, right? They have inserted the word breed, fellow Catholics. Okay, the Pope himself never, he, he never uttered that word, breed. He restated the Roman Catholic Church's ban on artificial birth control, adding there were many ways that are allowed to practice natural family planning. And so they don't even mention, right, that he affirmed the teaching of the Catholic Church on contraception, on artificial contraception, fellow Catholics. Instead, they run with the narrative that we, as Catholics, should not breed like rabbits, and that these words came from the Pope's mouth. Some think, excuse me if I use the word, that in order to be good Catholics, we have to be like rabbits. But no, he said, adding the church promoted responsible parenthood. And so you see, according to the translator, the word, the word breed was never in there, fellow Catholics, okay? We do not need to be like rabbits. Not breed like rabbits, but you know that word breed. You know, what's it imply? It implies that we uh, need to restrain ourselves as Catholics, right? We don't need to breed like rabbits, right? And how do you keep human beings from, from breeding like rabbits as far as the mainstream media is concerned, right? The mainstream media, they're not thinking, thinking about NFP, they're not thinking about na uh, natural family planning, right? They'd prob probably look at you like you were from outer space if you mentioned the words natural family. They wouldn't know what you're talking about, right? And so as far as the mainstream media is concerned, the way that you keep human beings from breeding like rabbits is artificial contraception, fellow Catholics. And so this is the implied message. They want us to believe, as Catholics, that Pope Francis is on the verge of allowing artificial contraception to be practiced within the Catholic Church, fellow Catholics. This is what they want you to come away with, fellow Catholics, in spite of the fact that Pope Francis actually affirmed the teaching of the Catholic Church on contraception, artificial contraception. He restated the Roman Catholic Church's ban on artificial birth control, adding there were many ways that are allowed to practice natural family planning. And so the word breed, fellow Catholics, was never in there. It was never in there. It was inserted by the mainstream media, fellow Catholics, and it was meant to suggest that we can now, as Catholics, practice artificial contraception. Don't breed like rabbits. It's rabbit season! Duck season! Rabbit season! Duck season! Rabbit season! Duck season! Rabbit season! 
It's rabbit season, right? No, it's not. It's not a rabbit season, right? According to Pope Francis, it's not a rabbit season. And hey, I understand fully what Pope Francis was saying there, right? He was saying we need to be responsible parents, right? We can we can space our children, right? We don't have to have one child on top of the other, you know, on top of the other, right? We can space our children, right? And there are legit legitimate reasons for uh, uh, spacing your children or even, you know, indefinitely putting off having children, right? It could be financial, it could be medical reasons, uh, what have you, right? And maybe you have some Catholics who believe that, hey, I'm Catholic, and so that means that I have to go out there and have as many babies as possible, right? Uh, but that's just, it's not the case, right? And this is where Pope Francis was coming from, right? He wasn't saying that we are, you know, breeding like rabbits out there and we need to, we need to stop, you know? Silly rabbit! Kids are for kids! <laughs> you know? That's not what he meant, right? That's not what he said, Right? And so here we have a case of word manipulation, fellow Catholics. They love, the mainstream media, the Pope Obama administration, they love a good game of word manipulation, fellow Catholics. All right? As it pertains to all of these issues that we as Catholics, you know, we oppose. You know, homosexuality, abortion, contraception, you know. And this is not to say that the Catholic Church is in your bed, as they like to, you know, uh, fling at us. You know, the Pope Obama administration, Planned Parenthood, the mainstream media. You know, the Catholic Church is in your bed, fellow Catholics. Nothing could be further from the truth. If anything, it's Planned Parenthood. It is the Pope Obama administration, the mainstream media. They are in your bed, fellow. GPS condoms, okay? Remember that? We've talked about GPS condoms here on Cafeteria Catholics. And what are GPS condoms, you might ask? Well, GPS condoms are these condoms that Planned Parenthood came up with, fellow Catholics. And these condoms, these GPS condoms, they come with a barcode, right? And there's this website that you can go to, right? And you go to this website, you type in the barcode to this uh, uh condom, right? And basically, Planned Parenthood, they can track you through this barcode, right? And you can comment on this website on your sexual escapades, fellow Catholics, right? Your sexual exploits, you can comment on them, right? And you can let them know where you are, what state, who are you having sex with, is it a man, is it a woman, are you gay, are you straight, right? And so they want to know. They want to track your sexual exploits, fellow Catholics. And yet, it's the Catholic Church that's in your bed. Nothing could be further from the truth. It's Planned Parenthood that's in your bed. It's the Pope Obama administration with their HHS mandate pimping out women, fellow Catholics. This is what the Pope Obama administration is doing, fellow Catholics, right? It's not about, you know, th th there are some legitimate cases where artificial contraception can be used for something other than having sex without consequences, right? There are some legitimate clinical cases, but for the most part, fellow Catholics, primarily, the reason why women engage in artificial contraception, the pill, is because they want to have sex without consequences, Right? We know this, right? We are all adults here, fellow Catholics, and we know that this is the primary reason for the pill, right? Sex without consequences, right? Some way, somehow, preventing conception. And if conception happens to take place, then you've got the morning after pill, right? Contraception times 30, right? A chemical abortion, right? And so we know that the primary reason for the pill is to in some way prevent conception and if conception happens to have a chemical abortion fellow Catholic. this is what the pill is all about okay and so the Pope Obama administration they want you out there having sex okay they want you out there having sex they are pimping you out and yet it is the Catholic Church 
supposedly, that is in your bed. And nothing, once again, nothing could be further from the truth. Last time I checked, fellow Catholics, paragraph 2370 of the Catechism of the Catholic Church, which states and teaches that all forms of artificial contraception are intrinsically evil when used for the purpose of preventing conception in some way, right? does not have a barcode. There is no barcode on section 2370 of the Catechism of the Catholic Church. There is no website for you to go to and let the United States Conference of Catholic Bishops know, let the Vatican know, whether you are up to par with the teaching of the Catholic Church on artificial contraception. Have you read section 2370 of the Catechism of the Catholic Church? No barcode, no website, fellow Catholics. The Catholic Church is not in your bedroom. It is Planned Parenthood, fellow Catholics. It is the mainstream media out there that is in your bedroom. It is the Pope Obama administration with the HHS mandate, fellow Catholics, who is in your bedroom. Not the Catholic Church. The Catholic Church is not waiting for you outside of the uh, Rite Aid or Walgreens or what have you, waiting for you to come out of there with contraception in hand so that they can snatch it out of your hands and throw it in the river fellow Catholics right Catholic Church is not doing that Catholic Church is not in your bedroom but the Catholic Church will use every means of communication to inform you as to its teaching on artificial contraception fellow Catholics it will do that right and I, as a Catholic, I will sit here and I will tell you the teaching of the Catholic Church on artificial contraception. I will tell you that it's a teaching that goes back to the infancy of the Catholic Church. You can find it in the Didache, the most ancient document, Catholic document, in the possession of the Catholic Church. Condemns artificial contraception, fellow Catholics. I will tell you these things. But in the end, you have free will. And unlike the Pope Bomb administration, I honor, the Catholic Church honors your freedom of will. And in the end, it's up to you, fellow Catholics, right? It is up to you as to whether you adhere to the teaching of the Catholic Church or not. It's not up to me. It's not up to Ephraim Cortez, your humble host, right? It's not up to me. But it is up to me. It is my responsibility. It is my duty as a Catholic to disperse this teaching, to take the teaching of the Catholic Church out into the streets. And that teaching includes the teaching of the Catholic Church on contraception, fellow Catholics, artificial contraception. And I am going to take it out there, as I have been instructed to do by Pope Francis, our Pope. I will take it out there. I have to. I have the ability and the capability and the know-how as to how to take the teaching of the Catholic Church out into the streets. And so I am going to do that. It is my responsibility, it is my calling, fellow Catholics, to do that. Okay, but in the end, it's up to you. In the end, it is your freedom of will that will dictate what you do or not do. It's your choice. It is your choice, not mine, fellow Catholics. Right? I'm not going to force you to buy into the teaching of the Catholic Church on contraception. I am going to lay out the teaching of the Catholic Church on artificial contraception. And from there, you take it. Right? It's up to you, fellow Catholics. I am not going to force you to buy into it, as the Pope Obama administration is forcing you to buy into Obamacare. Right? They do not honor your freedom of will, fellow Catholics. The Catholic Church does. I, as a Catholic, I do honor your freedom of will, fellow Catholics. The Pope Obama administration, they think that they are above God, right? And they go to a place where God himself will not go. And that is to violate your freedom of will. God does not violate your freedom of will, right? He lays it out for you. And then you decide, right? He honors your freedom of will to the point, fellow Catholics, that he allowed Adam and Eve to eat from 
the tree of knowledge of good and evil, fellow Catholics, in spite of the fact that he knew, because he knows all, right? In spite of the fact that he knew the ramifications of their actions, he allowed them to make their own choices, fellow Catholics. And they did. And we are paying for it till this very day, fellow Catholics, right? But it goes to show that God honors your freedom of will. The Pope Obama administration, do they honor your freedom of will? No, they don't, fellow Catholics. No, they do not. They do not honor your freedom of will. They want to control you, fellow Catholics. They want to be in control. They, they do not trust you to be in control of your own life, fellow Catholics. Right? They do not trust you to make the right choices. And hey, I mean, we are going to make some wrong choices, right? Adam and Eve, case in point, right? But we should be free to make the wrong choice, right? We should be free to do that, fellow Catholics, right? If you don't want to buy health care insurance, that's your business. It's not the business of government, to force you to buy, to purchase a product, fellow Catholics. It's not their business to do that, right? It is a government of the people, by the people, and for the people, not a government of the government, for the government, and by the government, fellow Catholics. Okay? It's not the way that this country was founded. It's not the way that the Constitution is set up, fellow Catholics, right? But, you know, in case you missed it, fellow Catholics, there is a coup going on in this country, fellow Catholics. The Constitution has been turned upside down in more ways than one, fellow Catholics. But anyway, let's go ahead and leave it there. And I will see you next time on Cafeteria Catholics. Please pray for our leaders, fellow Catholics, political leaders. Please pray for the clergy, our spiritual leaders within the Catholic Church, fellow Catholics. Please pray for the Catholic Church. Please pray for our Pope, Pope Francis. And please pray for the Senate Fathers, fellow Catholics. And also, please pray for this great country of ours, fellow Catholics. As you know, this great country of ours is in dire need of prayer. So please, fellow Catholics, pray. God bless. Assemble the army! Yeah, baby! Yeah. Man, that's just me. That's me, man. I'm rude.